If you want to successfully write a research article, or at least the first draft of one within a weekend, the first thing you're going to have to do is before you even get to that weekend, you're going to have to do all the pre-work in order to be able to do that. So obviously you need to have already developed an idea, you need to have already collected data, you even need to have analyzed that data in order to be able to go in and be able to write a research article in a weekend. But the next thing that you need to do is you really need to create your story. And so with every article, whether it's a review article or a research article, you really want to have a story that you are telling through the article. And so just knowing that I have all these conclusions isn't enough to go ahead and go into writing a really good research article. Instead, you wanna actually be able to illustrate your story. This is really commonly done through creating all the figures and tables that you want within your research article. And you create these before you ever start writing the research article. So our weekend to write this research article without using AI is going to be broken up into seven different sessions. Each of these sessions should be about two hours long, and that's all you really need to be able to complete your research article. So let's start with Friday. If Friday evening, we're gonna do a two hour writing session. In this session, we're going to be focused on creating our outline for the research article that we're writing. With this outline, we're going to start with our introduction. We're going to write down why our field is important, what the reader needs to know in order to be able to understand the research being done, and what literature led to the study that we are conducting today. You can also write a little bit of notes on what you might want to include to introduce the reader to your study, which will likely be your final paragraph. Then we're going to jump into the methods and in the methods we want to write down how our sample was collected, how our data was collected, how our data was analyzed, and then any data visualizations or things specific for publication. Then for the results section we want to identify our main themes and so we'll identify the headers. These are typically going to be the main questions or themes that you had within your figures and tables that you've already made beforehand. Then for your discussion, you want to write down what are the key points you want to make? What is the story you're telling and how does that story relate to the current literature and kind of explain the so what about that story. For your conclusion, you can write down which results you're going to pull out as being key and then write down the limitations and what future directions you think are the best to go for from this research study. And once you have all of this written down, that has completed your Friday session. So now we're going to come to Saturday. So Saturday morning, we're gonna have another two hour session. And this two hour session is gonna be focused on writing our introduction. So with this, you're going to write a statement about the importance of your study. Then you're going to dive in what you previously outlined Friday night on what the reader actually needs to know to understand your study. You can highlight the different literature that kind of led you to your study. So once you get that background information, what is kind of the field doing up to this point? And this helps show your research gap. Where are you fitting into the current research? And then finally, you're going to write a study introduction. And so you basically write kind of a rehashing of your abstract and your conclusion, but essentially you're leading them into what's gonna happen next. What did you study? So that they have context as they're reading through the rest of your paper. Now we move into the afternoon. So Saturday afternoon, we're going to do a session in writing our methods. And so if you have kept a really good lab notebook or if you have kept really detailed notes on how you did your study, this should be a really, really simple section to write and you should be able to easily write it within the two hours, if not even within an hour. What's important to remember while doing this is you want to share what someone else would need to know in order to replicate this study. If you write out a protocol for what you do, literally just looking at that protocol and pulling out the different parts that people would need to know to replicate the study is an easy way to write it out. Or if you were telling someone else how to do this that was in your field and knew the basis of your field, what would you tell them to do? So obviously, like if I'm in chemistry, I don't need to tell them how to calculate concentrations, but I do need to tell them what concentration I made my solutions at. So with that afternoon session wrapped up, you should now have your introduction and method section. So we're gonna jump into our evening session on Saturday. So in our evening session, we're going to write our results and this should actually be an easier section to write. So if you have a results and discussion section, so for example, in chemistry, I tend to have results and discussion sections within my articles instead of a results section and a discussion session. So if you have that, I want you to split your results and discussion section in half and work on 
one part on Saturday night and work on the second half on Sunday morning. If you have just a results section, you're going to complete that on Saturday night. And if you have just a discussion section, you're going to complete that on Sunday morning. So that's how this is going to work out. So a good way to write your results section is using the peer writing system. So with this, you're going to have a point evidence, explanation, and then a review or a transition sentence at the end. So you can make a point, what is the conclusion that you're trying to reach? You show how the results or the data that you collected and analyzed supports that point, and then you give the explanation. And so that's how you can go through this system is basically making your point, showing the data that supports the evidence, and then explaining that data, explaining the meaning behind it, and then finally following up with a transition or a review sentence explaining that conclusion again with the explanation. That finishes up Saturday. So now we've outlined, we've written our introduction, our methods, and our results, and now we're going into Sunday morning. So we're gonna have a Sunday morning session, and this is going to be entirely focused on writing your discussion piece. Or if you have a results and discussion combined section, you're gonna write the second half of your results and discussion section. With writing your discussion section, you really want to be following the story that you want to tell. And so an easy way to do this is to make sure that you are looking at your figure outline through your discussion. You can share the results and contextualize them within the field. So how do they match previous literature? How do they compare against previous literature? And then you wanna share the impact of these findings. So with our morning session done, in our afternoon session, we're going to focus those two hours on writing both a conclusion conclusion in an abstract. And these are two really, really similar pieces. So an abstract is going to assume no prior knowledge, where a conclusion is going to assume a little bit more prior knowledge. So you're not going to go into background information or things like that within the conclusion section, where you might include just a little bit of that within the abstract. With both of these, we're gonna talk about the importance. We're gonna highlight the gap that we're feeling. And with a abstract, you may also highlight a little bit of the background information to explain that gap. Then in your abstract, you wanna give a method sentence. In the conclusion, you don't necessarily have to give the method sentence if you don't feel like it flows well within that paragraph or couple paragraphs. In both, you want to highlight two to three key findings. And this is, if you had to bullet point your entire story down to two or three bullet points, what would it be within the findings? And then you're going to have a limitation section. And so this can be just one sentence, this can be a paragraph, it really depends on if you're finding new limitations within your study, or if there's just some limitations of your study. And so you wanna have that limitation section. And then you can have the impact and future work. So saying how, even with these limitations, how is this paper impacting this field? And what is the future work that should be done from this? With your abstract, you can tend to leave off your future work and leave that in the conclusions, but you wanna make sure that you have that impact sentence. And sometimes you can have or not have the limitations within the abstract as well. So while these two are really similar, they are a little bit different. And I always write my conclusion first and then I go back and write my abstract. And that helps me to be able to build out and have a little bit more sense of everything that I discussed within my research article before I go and write my research abstract. With the Sunday afternoon session, and finish, we have written the entire first draft of our research article. While we're still in the mood of writing, we're going to do an, an evening session, a final Sunday evening session, where we're actually going to edit our articles. And so this is going to be a first pass quick flow through and making sure you're identifying places where organization doesn't make sense, any glaring grammar and spelling errors, anything like that. You want to do that quick pass while you're still a little bit in the mood. Then I would recommend not doing anything on this article for about a week. Coming away from it so that you can come back with fresh eyes and do another pass of editing can be really helpful, but you fixed a lot of the glaringly obvious things so you don't have to go through as many passes with some space in between between those editing. Now, if you really want to be able to maximize these sessions, you want to have dedicated time to do deep work. And so you want to make sure that you have distraction free time that you are going to be highly focused on the task. You're not going to have your Facebook up or your WhatsApp up, you're going to silence your notifications, all of this, so that you can just focus on this task. If not, this two hour task could easily take you two days to complete if you don't actually sit down and focus that deep work. 
If you want all of this written out, you can download my scientific research paper checklist. And then if you want the actual prompts and how to actually build all of this out, make sure you check out my research article workbook. It works through all of these different pieces so that you can actually build out each one of these sections. And um, if you just work through that workbook, you can do that within a weekend as well. And you've basically written your research article. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.